I greet you all in the name of Jesus. Could you please greet your neighbor? Welcome to this family service. Thank you, choir. This week's topic will be on family only. The Lord has called me to teach on the family. It's been a while since I've dwelt on this topic. God told me that a healthy church is a church of healthy families. The strength of the early church was not the temple. The strength of the early church was families. The church was a gathering of families. When Peter was released from prison, the first thing he did was to go into a house since church was in houses. So today, I'm going to start a series of teachings on rapes inside family circles. I'm going to talk about it today on Wednesday, Friday and until next Sunday. The theme of my message this morning is Tamar, a raped woman. Tamar, a raped woman. Let's stand for the reading of the word. Can we stabilize this flashing light, please? It's bothering me over here. 2 Samuel 13, verses 1 to 22. You can read the whole story at home. I won't read everything to gain time. 2 Samuel 13, verses 1 to 22. After this, Absalom, the son of David, had a lovely sister whose name was Tamar. And Amnon, the son of David, loved her. Amnon was so distressed over his sister Tamar that he became sick. For she was a virgin, and it was improper for Amnon to do anything to her. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, son of Shimea, David's brother. Now Jonadab was a very crafty man, and he said to him, Why are you, the king's son, becoming thinner day after day? Will you not tell me? Amnon said to him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister, so his half-sister. So Jonadab said to him, Lie down on your bed and pretend to be ill. And when your father comes to see you, say to him, Please let my sister Tamar come and give me food and prepare the food in my sight, that I may see it and eat it from her hand. Then Amnon lay down and pretended to be ill. And when the king came to see him, Amnon said to the king, Please let Tamar, my sister, come and make a couple of cakes for me in my sight, that I may eat from her hand. And David sent home to Tamar, saying, Now go to your brother Amnon's house and prepare food for him. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house and he was lying down. Then she took flour and kneaded it, made cakes in his sight and baked the cakes. And she took the pan and placed them out before him. But he refused to eat. Then Amnon said, Have everyone go out from me. And they all went out from him. Then Amnon said to Tamar, Bring the food into the bedroom that I may eat from your hand. And Tamar took the cakes which she had made and brought them to Amnon, her brother, in the bedroom. Now, when she had brought them to him to eat, he took hold of her and said to her, Come lie with me, my sister. But she answered him, No, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing should be done in Israel. Do not do this disgraceful thing. 
and I, where could I take my shame? And as for you, you would be like one of the fools in Israel. Now, therefore, please speak to the king, for he will not withhold me from you. However, he would not heed her voice, and being stronger than she, he forced her and lay with her. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly, so that the hatred with which he hated her was greater than the love with which he had loved her. And Amnon said to her, Arise, be gone. So she said to him, No, indeed, this evil of sending me away is worse than the other that you did to me. But he would not listen to her. Then he called his servant who attended him and said, Here, put this woman out, away from me, and bolt the door behind her. Now she had on a robe of many colors, for the king's virgin daughters wore such apparel. And his servant put her out and bolted the door behind her. Then Tamar put ashes on her head and tore a robe of many colors that was on her and laid her hand on her head and went away crying bitterly. And Absalom, her brother, said to her, Has Amnon your brother been with you? But now hold your peace, my sister, he is your brother. Do not take this thing to heart. So Tamar remained desolate in her brother Absalom's house. But when King David heard of all these things, he was very angry. And Absalom spoke to his brother Amnon, neither good nor bad. For Absalom hated Amnon because he had forced his sister Tamar. May God bless his word. Please have a seat. Tamar, a raped woman. It is not just women who are raped, men also. We seldom talk about it, but nowadays it's not just women who are raped, men are too, especially children, and some men too. We know of a scandal that took place in a certain church. Children who were in the orphanage were sexually abused by so-called servants of God. There were boys who complained of pedophilia and homosexuality. It's true that it's very rare, but this morning a brother who was raped might be in here. So don't say that as far as as you're concerned, only women are victims of it. That's the reason why I would like to balance my teaching, because often parents are very careful with girls, but neglect boys. Parents are often watchful for girls, but neglect boys. We are in a world where homosexuality is prevalent. You must not forget that. We are in a world where homosexuality is prevalent. You might ask your little girl questions, but never your little boy, when in fact he is the one who, was, who has been raped. Now he even has homosexual desires that he can't tell you about. You are so focused on your daughters that you can't see your boy has been molested too. I'm calling rape, according to Congolese law, any intercourse without consent, any intercourse without consent. Thus, we can talk about rape when you are in a relationship, in a couple. Yes, a married man can rape his wife. If your wife does not want you, it is her body. Even if you are married to her, you have no right to know your wife without her permission. She belongs to God. The diary did not make you buy her. She is not a toy you can play with at will. Every husband who has intercourse with his wife without her permission is a rapist. 
Any married man who has intercourse with his wife without her permission is a rapist. And you, will, you risk death and will be judged as a rapist. You'll then be very surprised saying, I have never raped anyone. You raped your wife. In Africa, women in the household, in the marriage, rarely talk about it. But in Europe, there is even a phone number given to call the police against your own husband if he rapes you. And they are not wrong. They are not wrong. Would I want my daughter Shukrani to marry a man who is going to rape her? No. When we put ourselves in the man's shoes, we'll say, it's bad. But when you imagine it's your daughter, you understand. So no, that God has established a principle in his word which is you can't know intimately a person without his permission. There's already a debate arising, that of consent. If someone consents, it's not rape, but only up to a certain age, when the person is already mature. It's true there is no rape where there is consent, but when it's a child, even if... If he or she consents, he or she doesn't understand what he or she is agreeing to. So this too is rape since you've used his or her innocence to know him or her. That is rape, pedophilia and sexual abuse. Brethren, you may be very surprised by my decision to take the whole week to talk about this, but I'm telling you, it is a plague. It is a great plague in your homes, your homes, your homes. It is a great plague in your families. Your pastor is talking to you. I have been a pastor for 23 years. I have heard things. One day, I went to Makala prison. And God was gracious to me. The head of the prison greeted me in his office. And between the lines during the conversation... He said, Pastor, when you see all these prisoners, what are you thinking? Why do you think they are here for? I was wide off the mark. I could never have imagined the type of scandal we had in our country. I couldn't have done so. He told me, Pastor, half the men in this place are, are rapists. Half of them. So if there were 10,000 prisoners, 5,000 were there for rape. I've studied rape. Out of 10 raped women, only one talks, just one. Most of them keep silent. So, if there are 5,000 rapists, therefore, Behind these 5,000 rapists, there are 5,000 raped women. Since 5,000 is the one-tenth, so there are 50,000 of them. Behind 5,000 rapists, there are 50,000 raped women. Out of 10 rapists, only one-tenth end up in prison. Most of them walk around freely, especially in this country. My brothers, how often do young girls after the service, after worship and prayer take a taxi on the street corner and fall into the hands of rapists? They would throw them in the forest to be picked up. Sometimes you have to pay $50 to get them, to get her back. The Bible is such a complete and thorough book. That's why I love it. There is material on everything. And we see here in the house of the great David, the prophet David, in the house of the prophet, in the house of the man after God's heart, in the house of the great psalmist, 
rape. When I start talking, you're going to say, this won't happen in my house, but are you greater than David? In the house of the great David, the man who used to make demons flee, when he sang, the man who killed Goliath, the ancestor of Jesus Christ, there was rape. So don't say, not in my house. Maybe you don't know about it. Given that if there is one area where shame, taboo, dominate, that is in rape. Until people speak out or God reveals it. So dear parents, don't sit on a chair of perfection saying it can't happen to me, it never happened. Maybe it has already happened in your house. You have no clue it did. You never knew about it. So this morning, I'm going to tell you about four people who are around Tamar. I want to talk about David, I'll talk about Absalom, I'll talk about Tamar herself, and I'll talk about love. Who is David? David represents the parents. When I say parents, I'm not just talking about dad. Even if he's a man, David represents mom and dad. And in this context, David is a bad father, a very bad father. He resembles the modern fathers and mothers of today, a super busy father who has no time to check things out. Why am I saying that? Beloved, Amnon and Jonadab, his friend, knew David's weakness. He was a really busy man who didn't keep track of what was going on in his house. He was so much looking for victory over his enemies, for psalms to sing, that he did not follow what was going on at home. He didn't know what a real illness was, nor the difference between a real and fake illness. His child lied that he was sick. David the prophet did not see it. Why so? He was in a hurry to move on. If David had focused on Amnon's illness, he would have discovered that he was lying. But because he had a busy schedule, a busy royal schedule, he could not see that it was a fake fever. It was a lie. There was a power of darkness behind his own son. David is a spiritually insensitive father who cannot sense the presence of demons in his home. David is a naive father who believes everything the children say. David is a gullible father who believes everything. Dad, I'm sick. Okay, he's sick. What do you want? I want my sister to cook for me. He doesn't see that his son is attracted to his own sister. He's a father who is blind. He doesn't see that his son is not behaving normally towards his sister. I assure you, Amnon did not go straight to rape. He certainly started out having weird conversations, weird behaviors. And if David was spiritually alert, he would have known that something was wrong. When Amnon would have come to ask for Tama to prepare food in his room, he would have refused and would have sent someone else instead. Why do you only want Tama's food? Parents, rape happens in your, in your homes because of your distraction. Parents, rape takes place in your homes because of your naivety. You refuse to see your children the way they are. They have grown up. You refuse to see the problems that can arise from your daughter's way of dressing. You refuse to see the weird behavior between a cousin and your daughter. You refuse to see the weird behavior of your worker towards your daughter. You refuse to see the weird attitude of the uncle towards your daughter. You refuse to see it. All because you are in a hurry to move on. We go out in the morning, we come home at 9 p.m., we go out, we come home, and we don't have time to chat. David didn't chat with his children. David didn't take time to chat with his children. Therefore, they could fool him. They knew daddy was very busy. I'm telling you, 
in this day and age when parents are constantly on their phones watching TV, so much is happening they don't know about. They don't know about it. David was a man who lacked spiritual sensitivity, who didn't have time to talk to his children. I assure you, mom, if you talked more often to your daughter, she would have already told you that when she goes to school, the teacher tries to touch her. However, when she comes back, what do you do? Here's your food, eat it. That's all you tell her. Therefore, she can't tell you that the gym teacher has a weird behavior. You don't talk to your son. When he comes back from boarding school, you ask, what was your grade? Oh, I've got 50%. And you say, you're shaming me, you're shaming me. But you don't know why he went from 80% to 50. Maybe he was raped and you don't know about it. The only conversation parents have now is, what is your grade? What is your grade? Go and eat. What is your grade? When are you getting married? Go and eat. What is your grade? What do you need? That's all we know about them. Yet, our children go through so much, so much. Statistics say that 35% of women only on this earth have been sexually harassed. 35%. But your daughter won't say that to you. Why? Won't she? Because there are taboos in your conversation. There are taboos in the way you talk. Hence, the neighbor might might know your daughter has problems. You won't because you are ashamed. You are ashamed of talking about certain things. What kind of conversations do you have with your children? Always superficial ones? Well, you will never know your children then. I am myself a witness. My brothers, there are things that happen to me from the age of 7 to 10 that my parents do not know about up to now. Up to today, they do not know it, from 7 to 10. Why so well? He was the little Marcelo. Yes, my body was small, but my mind was not small. That's the problem. And if you want to understand your children a little bit, think about yourself when you were 12. Didn't you have problems sometimes? Didn't people try to rape you sometimes? Isn't it true that at times, although you were a 12-year-old boy, you wanted to play with 10-year-old girls? Do you really think that 12-year-olds today have changed. Besides, they are worse than the children of your time since they have the Internet. They have the Internet. David, a great man, yes, a great king, yes, but a bad father. Indeed, you can be professionally successful yet be a bad father. You can be professionally successful yet be a bad mother. You can be academically successful yet be a bad father. What happens is that failure in the couple, failure in the family, takes away your joy, the joy of professional success. How can you be joyful when you have everything but your daughter was sexually abused? You have everything but your son was sexually abused. We look after our finances, we look after our houses, we look after our property, but we don't look after our children when we have asked for them in prayer. Lord, give me children. Lord, give me children. God gives them to you, but you don't take care of them. No, dear parents, that feeding a child is not extraordinary. Even the hen feeds her chicks. Even the eagle feeds its eaglets. So stop saying I'm a good father because I'm feeding them. Animals also feed their litter. They take care of them and protect them. Talk to your children. Become friends with your children so that when something bad happens, they'll say, I'll tell mom, I'll tell mom, I'll tell dad, I want to tell dad. And if something really happened, you will be able to intervene before it happens twice, three times, four times, five times, seeing that some people have been raped for 10 years, 10 years, 10 years raped, raped by a family member. And the child is threatened. If you tell, you will destroy the family. If you tell, nobody will believe you. If you say it, you will be a bad child and the person keeps it for 10 years. 10 years. Where are the parents of those children who have been raped for 10 years?
That is the problem today. I certify that it's awful here in Congo. I went to Bukavu and by the grace of God, I visited the hospital of Pastor Dr. Mukwege. I can say he is one of the great men of his nation. Mukwege is one of the great men of his country. A pride for the Congo. When I met this man, I sensed a great man. This man has dedicated his life to surgically repairing women's physical wounds, but also spiritual ones, since he's a pastor. When I went to visit the hospital, I thought I was going to find women crying, filled with hatred and so on. But when I got there, I found hundreds of women singing, worshipping, speaking in tongues. I was very surprised. Then I said to them, what do you want me to do for you? I thought they were going to ask for money. They replied, peace. May God give us peace. May God give us peace. We only want peace. And among these women, I found some old ladies, old women also raped, grandmothers raped, tiny children raped. They were asking for one thing, peace. David had a specific flow. You see it when you read the word of God in the way Amnon got him when he asked for his, six, for his sister. He agreed to let her go cook for him. Likewise, when Absalom wanted to take revenge from Amnon, from Amnon, what did he do? He went to see David again. Dad, do you mind if all your children come to my house for my party? It's the shearing season for my flock. David says, okay. I agree. Then everyone goes and Amnon dies there. He's a dad who always said, yes, yes, he has no discernment. Dad, I'd like to sleep in such a place. Yes, dad, I'd like to go on holiday to my cousins. Yes, 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 yes. It's not because some cousins sleep over at your place that your kids have to sleep at theirs. They are safe in your house over there. Your children are not safe. It's not a give and take. In my house, I have workers I can control and discipline. In yours, it's not the case. I'm not going to send you my children, even if you send me yours. It's not because your friend's children, your friend's children come to your house that your children have to go to theirs. When other people's children are at your house, you are very, very careful. You control everything. But when your children go there, they are left with boys. They are, they are left with everybody. It's not a give and take. Parents who say, yes, 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 expose their children to rape. Can I come and sleep at your place? Yes, but this 18-year-old boy that you accept in your house, do you know what he does at night? We know what we did at night. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We know we were not born Christians. The parents are asleep and they think the children are asleep too. Nowadays, it's dreadful. It's the kids who tell the parents to go to sleep. Go to sleep. And you think your children are sleeping. And you take a child you don't really know. You don't really know. You don't know who he is to come and sleep at home. Do you know what he leaves behind after he's gone? Children don't always say everything. If you don't talk to them, you never know your children's lives. Parents, you will never know your children's lives. My parents don't know what happened to me from 7 to 10. They don't know anything up to today, and I won't tell them either. Can you imagine? Fortunately, what I went through from the age of 7 to 10 didn't destroy me, and God came to save me at the age of 15. So be careful. Be very careful. You can build your child's life by paying for good studies, a good education for years and years, but just one worker destroys everything and your daughter is destroyed. David's. What about Absalom's? They symbolize big brothers. Brothers. Sisters too. Friends. And husbands. 
who are often unaware of what has happened to their friends, brothers, sisters, spouses. Often when an unmarried girl is raped in these taxis, she comes back to church, cries about it, talks about it, but very rarely do I see a married woman do it. Do you think that these rapists who ride in these taxis are only looking for single women? It happens to married women too. Unfortunately, the married woman does not say anything. There are married women who are raped at work and even within, inside the family, being quote-unquote mature, she thinks, if I talk about it, I will be ashamed for me and the children. Then you see a home dis disintegrate and you don't know what happened. A rape happened. Absalom reacted badly to Tamar's rape. And most Absalom's friends, spouses, fiancés react badly to Tamar's rape. What did Absalom do? He said, don't worry, don't worry, he's your brother. But she's crying. She puts ashes on her head, her hands on her head as a sign of mourning and tears her colorful tunic, symbol of her virginity. She's distraught, but her brother says, it's nothing, it's nothing. He only gives her a room in his house. He feeds her, period, while she carries on crying, mourning. Someone else's problem is being dealt with. Superficially, your friend tells you she's been raped and you laugh about it, but you don't know what has happened to her. During the engagement period, I've noticed that sometimes fiancés are so selfish. You love a woman and you really sense she's the woman of your life. You know she's the woman of your life. And during the engagement period, she tells you I was raped. You then break up with her for that. Yet you preach grace. You say, gracious God, gracious God, gracious God. What was a sin? Having someone stronger than her, stronger than her, rape her. Is it her fault if she's a victim for you to reject her, to abandon her? In a moment of weakness, you too would like someone to come and help you. I'd like to tell you the truth. We don't just get married to be happy. We also get married to fulfill God's plan in the life of the other person. And it may be that God sends you in the life of this girl to be a source of peace, a source of consolation. The Bible tells us that Boaz married Ruth, knowing she was a widow who had lost a husband. He might have been afraid, but he was on a mission. And through this union, David was born. If you are really Christians, if you are really Christians, why are you rejecting your fiancés when you discover they had been raped in the past? If you, a man, told your fiancé about it, saying, I was raped one day at boarding school. Women will pray about it and accept you just as you are, won't they? But women, selfish as we are, yes, self-centered as we are, egotistical as we are, when we commit adultery, we expect the woman to forgive. When the woman commits adultery, she is repudiated as if the Bible only, as if the Bible's only for the profit of us men. It then makes women become hypocrites. They hide parts of their lives. The woman has a wound within her. She's hurting, but she can't tell you because if she does, you're going to reject her for something she suffered as a child, for something she suffered against her will. I like a story I've just heard. A girl was raped throughout her childhood for over eight years by a man. She met a man and told him the whole truth. And the latter told her, I will be the manifestation of God's love in your life, of God's love in your life. I'll marry you just as you are. Hallelujah. That's a Christian. That's a Christian. That's a Christian. And I would like to say this to Absaloms. When you are an Absalom, sometimes a rape 
can take place in your house. This is what I saw in Bukavu. Women rejected by their own husbands because they were raped. You all know what is happening in Kivu as to rape being used as a weapon of war. The military used rape to demoralize a whole population, to destroy families. Imagine raping a mother in front of her children, in front of her husband. See what he does, and they did that. This woman is humiliated, this woman is hurt, and instead of her husband taking her in, he rejects her. And there were a lot of married women in that situation. They are no longer able to go back to their husbands. Why? Because she was a victim. Victim. What wickedness from men, what meanness from men. That's why many women who work will never tell their husbands they have been raped by their boss. You'll just see a woman who pushes you away, a woman who doesn't want you anymore. And you won't know the issue since she knows you're a man without love. Absalom mishandled and didn't take Tamar's problem seriously. Sometimes in families, people know their sister was raped, yet they mock her as if she was immoral. She is a victim, but she's treated as if she was the executioner. Because of this, Tamas no longer shout. Tamas no longer speak. Tamas keep silent. But this empowers Amnon's. It strengthens Amnon's. Imagine if Tamar hadn't screamed or reported it. Amnon would go on raping other women. Since she spoke about it, Absalom killed him. I am against Amnon's death. But if I speak in terms of justice, rapists must be denounced so that they can be put in prison. Yes. I'm not against jail time for rapists. I'm not against it. Even if the rapist is forgiven by the raped woman, he must be put somewhere so that he doesn't rape other people. Given that receiving forgiveness is not a sign you have changed. Yes, magistrates are servants of God. Magistrates are servants of God. That's why I would like to say to our authorities, don't release rapists anyhow. He has just sent, spent two years behind bars. When then he is released, no Check if he's delivered. That's why we need ministries of deliverance in prison, seeing that if you release them, they will reoffend. Who are these people who use all these taxes? They come from prisons. They come from prisons. Hallelujah. Often we are ourselves Absaloms. If your own daughter has been raped, you start treating her as if she was unclean. Big brothers start treating her like someone unclean. She's given, she's even given nicknames when she's a victim. What we don't know is that when you destroy one woman, you have destroyed a whole country. You have destroyed a whole village. And Satan knows it. Satan knows a 12-year-old girl is not a 12-year-old girl. She is a grandmother. And if she's destroyed and filled with hatred, filled with bitterness, and even becomes frigid, spiteful, she's capable of birthing a whole generation full of hatred. Take care of your children. Look after your children. Sometimes I like what Mama Blanche does. At night she wakes up to go and see the children sleep. Yes, she wakes up. When we're traveling, she asks for their room to be filmed. She wants to be shown her children sleeping. It's important. It's important. We have become too modern, too modern, too busy for getting what's essential to us, our children, who didn't ask to be born. And we're letting them wander around like chicken in, chickens in the farmyard, exposed to everything. When they come back, we never ask them how things went. How was the party you went to? We don't ask questions. You went on holiday. What was it like? We don't ask questions. You were in university. What was it like? We don't ask questions. We don't ask questions. We don't ask. We don't talk. We don't talk anymore. When was the last time you had a an hour-long chat with your kids, just one hour. Yet, you watch movies for hours. You talk with your friends for an hour. You do things for one hour. What about doing it for your own blood, your own posterity? Absaloms. Tamar, as I said, Tamar is a raped girl. She is also a raped mother. 
he is also a raped boy. And you know, being a raped boy is really ghastly. Less boys than girls talk about it. A girl can talk about it more easily than a young boy. Many young children were very early intimate with the older girls who lived in the house. But they will never talk about it. These boys will never tell you about it, that such and such and such. And your children are being perver perverted at home, but you don't know about it. Why? You are shallow, not thorough. You have no friendship with your children. Children at an early age are attracted to evil, are infected with sin. Imagine a tamar. And this shocked me. A girl was raped. And not only was she raped, but she became pregnant. Pregnant by her rapist, by her torturer. And you know, I used to preach that you always needed to forgive. Always forgive. Sometimes you preach things and you say to yourself, this is true. I know it's the truth, but can someone apply this word in his life? Even if you are raped, don't have an avo even if you are raped, don't have an, an abortion. That's what I used to preach until I met a person who practiced that word. That's an angel. It was still in one of Mukwege's TV program. He had gone to Europe. They spoke to a woman who was testifying she had been raped twice and had become pregnant twice. She did not abort her children. Whenever she looked at the baby, the baby reminded her of the offender, the rapist. The baby had his face. She hated the child. Couldn't even breastfeed him. But when the gospel touched her heart, she loved the child and said, he's innocent. She kept her children and loved them. This means that's what being a Christian is like. Yet it upsets us. But what? That's what being a Christian is all about. That's what being a Christian is all about. Look at what we are. We are God's workmanship. Yet we look like the devil. Did God kill us? God is working on us to change us. And this woman behaved like God. She refused to kill the fruit of her womb. Even though the seed came from a rapist. She refused. She refused. But most people have abortions. For some it goes very wrong. Then curtage and you might end up infertile. Other Tamas become women you can't marry because they are frigid. She has an aversion to men given that she sees in every man her rapist. There are many Tamas in churches, many Tamas in families. Tamar, if you are here and you're listening to me, please do one thing. Talk to someone. In this world, there are psychologists who only listen because talking helps you unwind and heals you. And if there is no one in the family to talk to, look for a servant of God. And if you don't trust him, talk to God sincerely. Because if you live in hatred and resentment, you risk missing heaven. This hatred will deform your personality. If you are married, it will prevent you from loving your husband fully. And if you are not yet married, you will not know how to give yourself totally in love. You will therefore never be 100% neither for your husband nor your children. Because a wounded person always hurts. Jesus Christ came to heal the brokenhearted. Jesus came to heal that wound. Jesus came to heal you of this wound. Tamar. Tell someone, tell Jesus, tell your husband, tell your fiancé, tell a trusted friend, a trusted girlfriend. Talk about it. That's why during this week I'm asking the Department of Couples to help us, to help those who are doing the soul searching, to send us moms, to send us sisters who are filled with the Spirit of God 
because God has told me that many will need to confide as there are terrible things happening in families, terrible things happening in homes, especially when the rape is perpetrated by your own father. Oh yes, some girls have been raped by their, by their own fathers. One day where I used to live in Lemba, we heard a scream coming from the family next door. We asked what happened. Dad got drunk and raped the baby. People said it was witchcraft, but it wasn't witchcraft. I'm going to talk about this during the week. What makes someone do that? Imagine that li little girl when she will grow up. You have to find someone. You have to talk about it. You have to talk about it to be healed. And you know, my fellow man, if you think you know your wife 100% and you are always shallow with her, she will never tell you what's really going on with her. Wives, if you are superficial with your husband, he will never tell you that in his youth he was raped. That is why all superficiality makes us Davids. It makes us Davids. The problem of the house of David was superficiality. You're not well? All right. What do you want? Tama. Okay, Tama. Go and cook for him. What do you want? I want everyone to come to the party. Okay, go to the party. Then someone dies there. That's precisely what what doing things hastily mean, hurrying things, doing them in a hurry, sorting things out hastily. We do it with our kids. What are you saying? Sometimes you even talk to your kids without looking at them. You don't notice that your daughter has been sad for a month, that your son has been full of anger for a month. You don't even notice the attitude, the changing attitude of the children. You don't look at them anymore. You no longer look at them. I've noticed that when kids Today, see you on the phone too much, they also get a phone. They do the same as you. If they are talking to you and you're on the phone too much, they stop talking. Stand up, leave, and do something else. We're missing out on the times they want to confess things. They want to say things. It was the day they had the courage to say it. I'll say it. I'll say it. While he's talking to you, obviously, he's not going to start directly with a real conversation. He often, he often starts with a little thing then a bigger one to end up with a more in-depth one. But while he wants to do it, you on the phone, on the phone, on the phone, on the phone. Then he never tells you, parents, drop your phone sometimes. Look at your kids, talk to them. Put your phone away, turn off the TV, look at your girl, look at your boy, listen, pay attention, and you'll find out things. I like to talk to Amnons. Now, I would like to talk to someone here who has already raped someone. It's true you have become a Christian and God forgave you. Yes, for God forgives all sins. But have you asked for forgiveness? Did you ask for forgiveness? Did you ask for forgiveness from your cousin who lived with you, whom you sexually abused? She got a fiancé who believed that the woman must be a virgin for him to marry her and he did not marry her because of you. Have you ever asked for forgiveness? Did you know some people cry when they think of a specific person did you ask for did you ask for forgiveness to that girlfriend you had who didn't want to sleep with you but you gave her date rape drugs that made her sleep and you knew her she woke up and had lost her virginity have you ever asked for forgiveness to this girl have you ever asked for forgiveness i'm known know that a rape kills. A rape kills. Amnon died physically after raping Tamar. Maybe physically you are not dead, but spiritually you are. Know that there is always a spiritual transaction that takes place during a rape. If immorality opens a door to demons, know also that rapes, rape opens a door to them. Many raped girls have demons. Many rapists have demons because it is a door for the powers of darkness. And something came into your life. Something came into your life. After the rape, some rapists lose all emotion. They are like murderers. And a rapist is a murderer. Have you dealt with that? Have you dealt with that? A girl was raped as a child. The only thing she wants is for the rapist to look her in the eye and really apologize. That is the only thing she asks for. She says, the day it happens to me, 
I will be free. It, I will be free. I find it hard to love my, to love my husband. I find it hard to love. I would like him to apologize to me. Often we sing and dance, but there are lives we have destroyed. I'm ending with a couple of advice. The first one I'm giving to Tamars is I'm very surprised by the carelessness of today's women. If I were a woman and I heard about all the rapes that take place in taxis and the like, I wouldn't take a taxi so easily. I'm going to make sure I thoroughly check that taxi before I take it and also don't take it alone or it has to be a taxi driver I know well but I'll be very careful you take taxis at 10 p.m. you can really see who's in them you trust them easily and also be watchful since the Bible tells us that before he raped Tama I'm not got I've done got rid of all those who were in his room what does it mean he created the right climate for sin women God has given you an instinct. You can sense that this man is strange. You can sense that that uncle is not behaving like one. That cousin is no longer a cousin. That gym teacher is no longer one. You can sense, feel that. How come despite your instinct and the fact that you see Amnon take everyone out of the room, you think he's still, he still just wants to eat? Be careful. Another advice I'd like to give to parents. Avoid promiscuity. Avoid putting in one two-bedroom house, in a one two-bedroom house, uncles, aunts, three families in one single house. It's disorder. In the name of hospitality, you're destroying your children's lives. In general, where promiscuity is, there is rape. One shower for ten people. One room for seven people, boys and girls. The devil loves poverty because he operates easily in poverty. A child who has his own room and can lock it is more protected than a child who sleeps with four boys and three girls. You do not know who is who and who does what. That is why dear parents have the strength and character to say such a person won't live in my house. My house is not the village airport. Yes. Your house is not the village airport. When such uncle comes, he comes to your house. Another uncle comes to you. No, your house is not the airport. And if you become the airport, you will also receive the parcels from the village. You are allowed to say no. One will be living with me at the moment. You won't be mean. You won't be mean. Your first responsibility is to the children. If you, in the name of the extended family, destroy your nuclear family, you are a sinner. You are a sinner. Christians feel guilty for nothing. We make you feel guilty for nothing. Often we have the African spirit instead of the Holy Spirit. Oh, you have a big house. You have a big house. Since it's big, everybody's going to live there. No, 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 no. I decide who lives in my house. And if I don't want to, that's settled. That is my house. You have an, an uncle in the village who sends you a cousin to you without even telling you. The cousin just lands on your doorstep saying, okay, I'm here. Oh, really? I'll buy you a ticket. Go back to the one who sent you. I'll pay for your way back. I'll repackage and send you back. I'm going to pack you off. Have family meetings. I don't care. You don't do anything for me. Are you feeding me? There lies the problem. You're afraid to... You're afraid of people who do nothing for you. You are afraid to hurt people. You are all bound to hurt someone. When you live in excellence, you will hurt all the mediocre people. When you have decided to live in excellence, you will hurt the mediocre people. So you want to make your whole extended family happy while your children are being raped. Can't you control what's going on in your house? You don't know who's in the shower, who's out. Accidents in showers? I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm saying. I'm not talking nonsense. I know what I'm saying. You have very small children of 12 year olds, 12, 12, 12, 12. Then you get a 25 year old old girl to live with them. What is she teaching your children? Or a big boy with small children? 
What is he teaching them? In the name of African hospitality, there have been numerous incest in houses, numerous incest, a lot of rapes. And in the name of Africa, we don't say anything. We don't say anything about it. Why not? Because you do not want to destroy the family, yet your life is destroyed and the family carries on. Now you have demons in your life, spirits in your life, frigidity in your life. You have the right to say, honey, we have only two bedrooms. I'm not convinced it's the right thing to put four boys in that room. What's weird sometimes is that you're newlywed, your wife is 18 and you're lodging a 30-year-old 30, 30 man in your house when you're at work all the time. They walk around in panties with a hairy chest and you don't care. I will kick all of you out. Leave my house. Leave my house. Say what you want. It is my house. Your problem is that you are bossy everywhere but where you are supposed to. That's what some men are like. They are bossy everywhere but where they are supposed to. Bossy, where is my chicken? Oh yes, where is my chicken? Where is my tea? Where is my tea? Where is my chicken? So they sent you a villager who landed at your door at your house at two in the morning and he's going to live with you? I'll send you back with some supply. Then I'll call the one who sent you saying, don't you dare do it ever again. Are you afraid of witchcraft? Yet again, that's Africa witchcraft. Did you know that many witches are not witches? They just have strange faces. Yeah? No, I'm telling you, this sermon is getting on my nerves. I'm making an effort to restrain myself. Hmm. Let me stop here. <laughs> Let's stand up.